All right guys, been a little while since we've uploaded a video, but this is interesting and fun because we're sitting inside of a 2024 Mustang GT for the first time, my first time. Haven't really seen these things in person yet. I know the internet's full of different videos with S650, but guys, this is kind of my first time. So we're just gonna walk around. I'm not even really supposed to be back here in the bullpen at this dealership. I kind of have permission, but not really. So I don't have keys. We can't play with the features. We can't do any of that, but we can touch a little bit if they are unlocked. Hopefully we don't get, we don't get kicked out, <laughs> but um, anyway, so let's just explore. Let's walk around and see what we can see. See if we can pop the hood, see what uh, we can do with these um, before the PDI process. You guys can see that they have not been unpackaged yet. They have been delivered today. There's four of them, including a dark horse. It's gonna be our first time, well, my first time, in person seeing a dark horse or any of these. So let's go. That is a beautiful color. Isn't it? It's wild. There's a lot of purple on it. Yeah. Purple and some gold flake and blue. It's crazy. $69,000. bucks. Well, Pretty cheap. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, it's blue. It's more of a base. No, it's got the full screen. Okay. Let's check it out. Oh, that is nice. That is nice. The phone's at eye level. So the screens are actually pretty low. I thought they'd be too high. That's a good thing. I don't have the keys, guys. I'm not even supposed to be back here. Here we go, Gen 4 Coyote. Dual throttle body, two intakes. Our first look, my first look, in person. I think I think Sean said five. This is really nice. It's the first time I'd actually leave one on there. Mustang. So without the active exhaust, you got single tip versus the dual. And taillights are definitely skinnier. So I've been writing Raven on video for months now that I didn't really like them. But in person, I am pleasantly wrong. Very wrong. So I do like it. The diffuser still growing on me, but the taillights is a win. Yep, those do look really good. It's vapor blue. Night pony package, this one is locked. And this one's got the two split screens. So cloth interior, Let's see what the price is on this one. 46, manual, so you can roll your own gears. It's a green, so it's been ordered by somebody. So we don't want to mess with that one, but wouldn't buy this one either. It doesn't have quad exhaust, although I'm sure you could add it. I don't know though, for the right price? Hmm, tempting. Let's see what the price is. Let's see what the price tag is gonna be. But yeah, I'd imagine you can swap that diffuser to that one and then run some quad tips. Aftermarket's definitely gonna have us covered there, I'm sure. Change out those wheels. This one is 53,000 bucks with the tenor rating, no performance package. It's just a regular GT. Very, very neat. 
got a multi-layer spoiler. This is this is hot. So let's get down low. Let's see what she's got under her skirt. Lots of arrow. Kind of like the 350s and the Mach 1s. Ventilation. This has got all the coolers on it. Oh, I like that black tip exhaust. That's pretty hot. Let's see. Let's check out this one. So, oh, cool. A little bit of arrow down here, too, for a non Dark Horse, non performance package. That's pretty neat. Kind of reminiscent of a Mach 1 GT350. Let's check out the seats. Regular leather. Back seats look identical to S550. Everything is very S550 in here, honestly. It really kind of is. Drive modes, I've been talking in <laughs> videos for years about wish that Ford would finally do this. I'm glad to see that they finally did. For the S650. Put drive modes on the dash where they should be and off of this. Actually, don't hate the dash. Different departure than the uh, regular Mustangs that we've enjoyed over the years and all the history with the uh, the dual humps here, the dual cowl, but going with this kind of BMW-ish Euro spec interior, it's cool. I get it. Nice design. Very S550. All right, guys, back in the garage, back home. We just sat in the all new 2024 a couple of mustangs including the dark horse and man we got a lot to talk about so would we get rid of this for the 2024 let me know down in the comments down below what would you do because i mean we're 700 horsepower already we could do a fuel system and crank it up to a thousand we got wheels we got exhaust we got all those things should we go to a 24 should we put this back to stock go to a 2024 Mustang GT and start all over for content purposes. I mean, there is only one way to go and that is up with the new body, but I don't know, I kind of love this car. Let's talk about it just a little bit more. Lots to talk about, lots to take in. I mean, we did not get to play with the features and all those things, but there's a real, there's a lot of really cool things. I'm, I'm glad to say that I was completely wrong about a lot of the stuff that I've been griping about over the past few months with the 2024 since now we have officially seen it in person um wow 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 there's a couple of things that i don't like like the rear diffuser in the back i think it's just too big and it looks out of place but it depends on the exhaust setup so with the single tip non-active it just looks bland and big and fat and it doesn't look right quad exhaust it looks better on the dark horse it looks like a home run on the i wouldn't change that on the dark horse i think it looks really good i mean the whole dark horse looks amazing and the rest of the car the regular gt uh has completely grown on me the headlights the interior all of it looks really good i'm glad to see that even though we have basically ipads as a dash they just sitting in it you know i'm 511 they don't sit way too like too up high they're still about the same level as like a normal dash which is a big thing i was really afraid that they would be just blocking and intrusive and it's not now if you go with the full dash it doesn't to me so far look like ipads now with the more base model with the two screens yeah maybe but as far as the 401a and what you'd get in like the dark horse with the full screen looks good Again, we didn't get to turn it on. We did, get, we did not get to play with it. We didn't get to do any of that. Um, that's going to be coming up hopefully later today. I got a phone call that once it goes through the PDI process, we're going to get to drive it. Which one will we drive? Which one might we explore maybe buying in the future? What is the plan? To be determined, so make sure that you guys are keeping up to date with the videos. In pictures and video, I was not really a big fan, but in person, I'm telling you, it is definitely better. I am a big fan. I think it looks really good, especially the Dark Horse. It looks really good. But, you know, should we potentially put this one back to stock and trade for it 2024 and start this whole thing all over again? Because, I mean, guys... Content is king, you know. The pro is going to be, obviously, new build, new stuff, new things coming from the aftermarket for the S650. So stuff that nobody has ever seen or done before. Instead of replicating a build over and over and over, like you see a million times on YouTube with the S550, this is kind of uncharted territory. All new aftermarket support, new cosmetic stuff, new this, new that. The S650 will get a lot of really cool treatment from the aftermarket so that kind of leads me away from buying a performance package and 
stuff like that because you're going to be able to do a lot of cool different things with the aftermarket soon to be revealed as these companies ramp up their designs and start pushing product and all those things so lots of cool pros there but a big con is tuning yes there are supercharged s650s running around but they are whipple ford tunes so can you tune them yeah well ford can you pull it down go e85 fuel system absolutely not they're going to be probably 50 state compliant tunes 91 octane or maybe 93 just depending but i don't think that ford's going to allow you to play with those tunes um for like with the whipple for example uh for some time so will the ecus eventually be cracked for aftermarket tuning yes eventually but that could be a year from now could be six months from now it could be tomorrow could be three years from now guys we don't know we don't know um, it just all depends on the aftermarket tuning companies getting together and cracking the codes for all this rolling encryption and everything else. But um, yes, you can get a Whipple supercharger for an S650, like I said, but you're going to be pretty much maxed out. It's a one and done tune from Ford and it's going to keep you warranty safe and EPA compliant. But as far as aftermarket tuning, we shall see. It's going to take some time. Really just kind of a discussion. I mean, we've got wheels. We've got this. We've got that. we got all these things. We've built these cars over and over and over. The S550. We know what to do. And it's fun, but it's also boring at the same time. A new chassis. It's not really a new chassis, but a new Mustang, the S650. There is a lot that is different under the car, in the car, under the hood. Got Gen 4 Coyote. Lots of different things. The exhaust is all going to be different. Lots of new, new with the S650. So should we do that instead of just, you know, putting a fuel system on this car and, you know, taking it to the track and making dyno numbers and doing all those things that we've seen time and time and time over and over again with the S550? Should we continue our build here or do we stop it? And do we start selling parts off of this car, put this back to stock and go buy the new one? Even if it's like a base 401A non-performance package or whatever, which is kind of what this is, a non-PP car, this is a 401A. So should we basically get this same car just the 2024 or, or should we wait a year or should we continue to build this guys let me know in the comments what would you like to see i mean again content's king the story is everything and the s550 while i love it so much and i've had like four or five of these they're all built similar so i love this car to pieces and i've said it before i don't really know that i would want to trade this one in on the new one but after seeing in person everybody's going to have the same challenge. Once you see it in person, it's like, man, I could have that. You know, I could buy it. I could mod it. Once the aftermarket starts releasing all their products for the new Mustang, it's going to be quite a new adventure and something new instead of seeing like, um, oh, we've done this. We've done that. Okay. Well, so is everybody else on YouTube, you know? So yes, 650 might be a game changer and the right direction as far as that goes. But I don't know because I really love this car. I really do. So I don't know. Again, let me know in the comments what would you do in my situation. I don't know. Plus, here's something else too. The new Mustangs do not. Let me turn the camera actually before I say this. Something else that's important that should heavily weigh into our decision making is the cost. Okay, so yes, it's new. Yes, it's here. Yes, we can buy one. But should we financially? So hear me out. This is a 2022. We bought it a few months ago, about six, seven months ago, I think. And Ford is running special rates on 2022 leftovers. That's why we bought this one. And we got some really killer interest rates because we got this and we got a truck. So the new 2024s are not going to be under that same umbrella as these 22s that were left over uh, several months back, okay? So they're gonna be standard interest rates and we all know what those look like at this day and age. They are screaming high, doesn't mean it, doesn't matter if you're an 800 credit score, you're probably still gonna get a seven, eight percent on a Mustang. I mean, let me know your story down in the comments, maybe you got lucky, or you can shop with your credit unions, you can do all those things, but I like to finance with Ford Motor Credit and um, yeah, because they like me and I love them. But, um, yeah, so if we did that, the payment's definitely going to go up. And this one is very, very cheap. Very cheap because we qualified for those special interest rates. You could have 0% all the way up to 1.9 on the Mustangs, depending on the length of the loan term that you went with. 
And uh, it'd be really unfortunate to get rid of that really stupid small payment. We might finance around the same amount of money as this one, but the interest rate's gonna go up. So I don't know, that's definitely gonna drive the payment up probably a couple hundred bucks. So is that also worth it? I don't know. I don't know, I just don't know. But I'm looking forward to getting to drive one, playing with the features, getting to turn it on and sit in the new Mustang a little bit more hopefully this afternoon. So stay tuned for more video content, but this is just a little bit of a talking head discussion and we'll see what happens. See you guys later. Bye.